One of the things that you might have heard before is not just the word academic journals, but the phrase peer-reviewed. So um, let's talk about what that means. Basically, when um, you've got different people who are working in a university setting, they're all doing different kinds of research. So let's say you've got a psychologist, and this person is working at UBC. And then you've got another psychologist that is working at um, SFU. And a fourth one who is working at um, University of Toronto. And one more, let's just let's stick with four here. A fourth researcher, and let's say that this person is working at Queen's. They're all working in psychology, but they all work at totally different places. So how do they communicate with each other? They communicate through academic journals. What each of these people will do as they do their research is they will write a paper. So let's see, this person's paper is here, this person's paper is there. There's that person's paper and that person's paper. And um, what they do is they will submit these papers for publication in an academic journal and that is how they will each know what each other is doing when they're researching. And they'll be able to see what the current state of knowledge is in that area. So it's kind of like the academic journal is the, the tool that they all use to create shared collective knowledge. Because they're all doing research in different places, there has to be some kind of quality control as well. And that's where the peer review process comes in. So what happens here is that we're going to use these same four people and just pretend that they're, they're um, four new people, is that all the papers, we'll just shuffle these up a little bit here, all the papers that all the different researchers write get submitted and they get submitted blindly. So the editorial board of the journal doesn't know who wrote which one. And what they do is that they read them. So now these are all written by a different person. And they quality control them and they make sure that they hold up to the standards of, of research in psychology. This is called the peer review process. And what they'll do is they'll either say, yep, this one looks great, uh, yeah, uh, it's very sound, the research is wonderful. Yep, this one looks good, that's well suitable for publication. This one, you know, it's pretty good, but we think that the, the results need to be questioned a little bit further or the person needs to make some revisions. So they might return that one to the, the, to the writer and say you need to make some changes. And, you know, sometimes a paper will come in and they'll just say, you know what, nope. This doesn't hold up to the standards of academic writing, so we're not going to accept that one. And the really key thing is that none of these people know who wrote which paper so that they can try and eliminate as much bias as possible um, as they're making that decision. So why is this such a valuable process in, in, in the academic world? Well, it tries, it, it tries to reduce bias, like I said, and it ensures quality control. And it really makes it so that when people are writing brand new papers, they really are coming up with new ideas that really matter and that they can each trust each other um, to know that this was a sound experiment and that the results are valid. So what happens once the papers are all submitted and either accepted or rejected is now we have our journal that's going to get published multiple times a year. This becomes important later when we start to look at um, actually finding them in the system, in the library system. So for example, one academic journal, the Journal of Psychology, might have four different issues in the year. So there might be one published um, in January, and there might be one published in February, and then March, and then April. So they're all in the same year, but this is issue one, this is issue two, this is issue three, and this is issue four. So it works kind of like a magazine or a newspaper in that it comes out um, every now and then. 
and each one will have a collection of different journal articles that different researchers have written and that have been peer-reviewed. What I'll do is just quickly show you uh, an example of a real journal. So this is an example of an actual journal and what it looks like. Sometimes they'll have a completely different cover. And you can see, unlike a magazine, it doesn't have any pictures or advertisements. It's just academic articles. And this is the type of source that your psych instructors want you to use for your research papers. So we know now what peer-reviewed journal articles are and why they're considered valuable in the academic research community. The next step is for us to think about where they live online and how we find them.